When I was starting out as a dividend investor, it really helped me to look inside of some people's portfolios, pick their brains, see what they were holding on to for the long term. So I thought, hey, you know what? It might be a good idea to show all y'all out there, especially you beginners, five of my dividend stocks that are at the tippy top of the portfolio. Now, these are the stocks that are on the board back there that that number is in aggregate, meaning that it is combined. That's what I do share on my dapperdividends.com. Click there and hit my portfolio and you can check out those individually. And if you didn't catch it, I am Russ and this is my channel, Dapper Dividends. So thank you for making me a small part of your investing journey. And with that, let's look at the number five spot, which with 4.7% of the portfolio is Kimberly Clark, ticker KMB, gets a dividend safety score of 88, which is very safe. Current dividend yield of 3.23%. Check this out, our yield on cost is 3.37%, giving us $194 of annual income on those 42 shares. Couple key metrics there, net debt to capital 91%, but Simply Save Dividend says not meaningful due to accounting noise. They do have a dividend streak of actually 50 years, so this needs to be updated. They are a dividend king. Now, because Kimberly Clark is in the business of wiping butts and blowing noses, they have a compound annual growth rate the last 20 years of 7%, which is pretty good for a big blue chip company like Kimberly Clark. And consumers keep buying their products, so they have a nice up and to the right steady dividend growth, again, that has been uh, increased for 50 consecutive years. And that's $4.64 a year, which is good for $1.16 a quarter currently. And that dividend yield is about in line with the five-year average, but the forward PE is pretty high above the five-year average of 18.7. But again, the whole sector is up with the consumer staples at 23.2 and they are buried almost all the way to the right of the 52 week price range. Now, one thing I will point out is their free cash flow payout ratio is at 93% the last 12 months. I would love to see this start trending down to below 70%. But I think Kimberly Clark is going to be able to recapture some of that with the increased prices that people are indeed now paying, which is why, right, the stock has jumped up because uh, the market responded well to Procter & Gamble and Kimberly Clark that they're able to pass off those higher cost of goods to the consumers and the consumers are paying it. Alpha spread has an intrinsic value of $107.23, which makes Kimberly Clark currently about 25% overvalued. And I had bought a few shares a little while ago when it was in the low 120s, almost at the 52 week lows. I couldn't pass up that deal. So I'm kind of holding off for right now and might add a few more if we can drift back to the low 130s. But again, Kimberly Clark, I think they're a fantastic dividend growth company. And number four with 5.7% of the portfolio is AT&T. You guys know that I really do like what AT&T did and I'm drinking the stanky Kool-Aid. I think that they are leaner and meaner and this is a good thing that they are focusing on the wireless and the fiber, the internet, that they're not trying to be some sort of streaming media conglomerate. Just Get rid of that. It was a mistake. And I like that now that instead of trying to be a streaming company, they're going to bring you the streaming companies of your choice through the internet and the wireless. So fantastic. They get a dividend safety score of 70, which is safe. Current yield, massive 5.69%, but below that five-year average just about. Again, they did reduce the dividend 47% because they spun off Warner Brothers Discovery that was about $20 billion or so of revenue that was going out the door. So they, I like to say they right sized that dividend instead. So about $417 and you guys can see it's been painful. I'm in this for the long run, for the long game. Yes, I'm down 19.7%. That's not comfortable, but do you know what? We're learning, we're living, we're going forward, and I'm sticking with AT&T, and I think that they're going to be able to pay that dividend consistently and start growing it once again. And look at that, our yield on cost is 4.57%, currently 569 So 
If we buy here, we can start increasing our dividend yield on cost. Net debt to capital about 51%, so edging a little bit high for the telecoms. But the payout ratio they have at 63%, and I should have double checked it, naughty me, but AT&T does have a target of 40 to 43% of their free cash flow payout ratio. This first quarter, because there's still some residuals of WBD, I think it can be a little bit tricky. It's not as clean, so I'm really looking forward to the next quarter so we get a full solid quarter without any attachment to WBD. And of course, they did reduce that dividend. So the dividend growth streak just reset back to zero. But I think this is healthy for the company going forward. Currently paying $1.11 per share. So that's 27 and three quarter cents every 90 days from AT&T per share. That dividend yield again is below the five year average of 6.45%, which is just really high. The P.E. ratio, though, check that out, only 7.9, which is well below the five-year average. They are buried at the 52-week price range, and they are just way below the communications sector P.E. as a comparison. But according to Simply Save Dividends, I do want to point out the free cash flow, and you know I like to use the free cash flow payout ratio over earnings per share, 64%. So even if that number stands true, then that is still below that 70% threshold. And I think AT&T is such a cash cow, they have no problem paying that dividend. Now, Alpha Spread does have a $45.29 intrinsic value for AT&T, which is about 57% undervalued at the current price. Now, I don't think that's quite right. According to Alpha Spread, I don't know if they're still including Warner Brothers Discovery in that, but as a dividend company, I think they are going to have no problem increasing that dividend and paying that dividend for many years to come. In the number three spot, you know them, you love them, ticker JNJ Johnson & Johnson with 6.2% of the portfolio. This is a company that I'm just gonna go right and say it, I probably should be adding more and I think I might even though their share price has really crept up over the last few weeks. Dividend safety score of 99 with very good reason as we've talked about before on the channel. Current yield only 2.43% but look at our yield on cost 3.07%. So this is just the power of getting in early and letting those dividends start to grow and compound, you get a very nice yield on cost after holding for just a few years. $194 for our annual income, but check it out, we're up 26.1%, $1,657. We've gone up on the 43 shares we have of Johnson & Johnson. One of the most solid companies, net debt only 4%, which is very low. Forward payout ratio, only 44%. That's low. Payout ratio, current 42%. Everything is just wonderful with Johnson & Johnson. 9%, 9%, 20 year CAGR. That is just fantastic. Dividend growth streak, I think is almost at 60 years now. If not 60 years, paying out $4.52 per share every single year, good for $1.13 every 90 days. It would be nice if their dividend yield was above the five year average, but it's a little bit below, about 7% below. Their PE ratio is a little bit high, it's a little bit above, but we're paying up for quality and they are again just buried to the right of the 52 week price range. And they actually are in line with the sector comparison. I like how Simply Save Dividends, I'm gonna go into it for this one because they're just such a great company. They are below or above almost every metric that Simply Save Dividends sets. Their free cash flow payout ratio, 56%. Earnings per share just up and to the right consistently. Same with the free cash flow per share. Sales growth did hit that little bit of a bump during COVID times. Consistently buying back shares. Total sales approaching $100 billion for the year. Return on invested capital is 23%, which look, they want 8% they wanna see, which is really solid for the pharmaceutical companies. Virtually no debt, 4% of net debt to capital. Incredible, and I love this, this is my favorite. Interest coverage ratio, they're only receiving $185.39 of operating income to cover every one dollar of interest expense. J&J, 
simply the best. Alpha Spread has an intrinsic value of $142.30, which currently makes them about 23% overvalued. But you know what they say, you gotta pay up for quality sometimes, and this is about as quality as they come. And I think if you stick with Johnson & Johnson, yes, they're going to split, they're gonna spin off their consumer health segment in 2023, but it's still a wonderful company, and all around, I think they are just the bedrock and the foundation of virtually almost any serious dividend growth investor's portfolio. Now in the number two spot, this is an interesting one. This is Starbucks with 8.1% of the portfolio. And why do I say it's interesting? Well, if you follow along on dapperdividends.com, you'll see I've been sharing my options income, which is pushing $1,000 since the beginning of the year. But very recently, I had an options contract that I sold a cash secured put on that was assigned to me for Starbucks. I was awarded 100 shares of Starbucks at $80 a share. And that's okay because now I'm gonna be selling covered calls on Starbucks. So this may not be here for very long, but as things stand right now today, it is indeed the number two position of the portfolio with 134 shares of Starbucks. Current dividend yield 2.51% and they're paying us $262 of annual income but we're actually down $151 or 1.4% 1 on the shares and they do get that dividend safety score of 67, which is safe. Now, one thing I do love about Starbucks is they haven't been paying a dividend for very long, but check out the last 10 years CAGR, the compound annual growth rate, 21%. That's lightning quick. The last five years, 17%, and their last increase was 8.9%. So this is something I'm trying to look at as I go forward, and I'd like to impart on you, is that it is not always the starting yield, but something we should really be focusing on is how much they're growing that dividend. And if maybe small, but if they keep growing it that fast, when you get in early, that's gonna keep compounding. And before you know it, you're going to have a very nice yield on cost. They're paying out $1.96 per share per year, good for 49 cents a quarter. And that dividend yield, check it out, is 29% above the five-year average. The forward PE ratio is actually below the five-year average. So that's something we love to see is when the dividend yield is above the five-year and the forward PE is below the five-year. And their 52-week price range, again, buried to the left at the low, but still they are way above the sector PE ratio of 12.7. Their free cash flow payout ratio is 50% according to Simply Save Dividends, so they have no problem paying that dividend. Now, Alpha Spread does give them an intrinsic value of $83.40, which currently makes Starbucks about 6% undervalued. Now, I did not intend to have 100 shares assigned to me, but I knew that's a risk. And as somebody that dabbles in options, I will only do it with companies that I'm okay getting stuck with. If something crazy happened and I had to hold Starbucks for the next year, I would be okay holding Starbucks for the next year. So my word to the wise is if you're dabbling with options, only do it with companies that you are okay holding on to, and of course in the number one spot with 13.1% of the portfolio. If you're playing along at home and following the channel, you know that I understand what I'm doing. I'm breaking some of the rules with PepsiCo. I'm adding when something's over 5%. I'm adding when something is over 10% of the portfolio. I'm buying when it's quote unquote overvalued. I'm just breaking all the rules with PepsiCo because I deemed them to be a foundational stock and I wanted them to be a core position that I can hold for the next 20 years. And the way I look at it is if you would have bought PepsiCo 20 years ago or any great dividend growth company 20 years ago, even if they were overvalued, they are great companies. People want great companies. They will keep buying great companies. So it would look like a fantastic deal looking back 20 years later. So their current yield is 2.65%, dividend safety score of 93, very safe. They're paying us currently about $446 every year. Check out the gain 
16% we are up $2,328 and our yield on cost 3.07% nice to see it north of 3% where that dividend yield currently is at 2.65% and again we have those 97 shares so three more shares and we will be at the 100 shares we started buying doing one a week for 100 weeks until we get to 100 shares so net debt to capital 69% they have a little bit of debt a little bit more than I'd like, but I think that they can handle it, and I'll show you why in just a minute. They increased the dividend during the recession. They are a dividend king, so they have been paying that dividend for 50 years. Simply save dividends, come on. Dividend growth rate, 11% over the last 20 years, and then 7% CAGR the last five years and the last year, but that's okay. Big blue chip company, consumer staple, wonderful company. And the current dividend is $4.60 per year, good for $1.15 per quarter, which they did just raise like clockwork. Expect those dividend increases to just keep coming. Now the dividend yield is about 8% below the five-year average. And the PE is 26.1. I think a lot of investors are trying to hide out inside of some of these more stable companies, kind of using them like a bond proxy. The 52-week price range, again, buried all the way to the right. And they are a little bit higher than the consumer staples. Now, free cash flow payout ratio, again, is a little bit high. But I think that this will start coming down as they are increasing their prices and they're bringing in more money. So I think this will start to normalize and start trending down over the coming years. They do like to buy back shares, but like a lot of companies, they kind of taper that off during COVID. Currently, 1.39 billion shares outstanding but their sales keep going up and to the right. And this is why I feel safe with Pepsi is because of the management team. Uh, Ramon LaGuarta, love what he's doing as a CEO. I like his vision and outlook, not afraid to try things and their return on invested capital, which is kind of gauging how uh, management allocates that capital. 19% I think is just fantastic for such a big blue chip company. And while they have a bit of debt, and I would like to see their interest coverage ratio a little bit higher than 6.56%. I'm fairly confident that PepsiCo is going to be able to keep paying that dividend and increasing it. Alpha Spread has a current intrinsic value of $152.01, making Pepsi about 13% overvalued. Now I'm only gonna be buying three more shares of PepsiCo and that's it, I'll be tapped out and I'm probably gonna sit on those 100. I'm gonna sell out of the money, way out of the money, covered calls to just be generating an extra 15, 20 bucks a week on those shares because I don't want to lose them. I worked, did a lot of work to get them, but I'm going to have a very exciting uh, celebratory video for that 100th share. Uh, there will be a very nice surprise with that as well. But I would like to know what is your top company that you hold in your portfolio? Who is in the number one spot of your portfolio? And hey... If you want to know about the Ten Commandments of Dividend Investing, check this little box next to my head and I'll tell you all about the Ten Dividend Investing Commandments right there and I will see you later.